Okay. Um, so, so welcome everyone to today's session, today's network session. Um, I'm Andrea Gibbons, uh, the UK Network Manager for Food for Life Get-Togethers. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of words about Food for Life, which is just a program about bringing people together through how we grow, access, cook, and share good food. Um, so we support well-being in communities um, through work with schools, local authorities, other institutions, and our partnerships with um, folks like Groundwork Wales, who um, are bringing this amazing session today. Um, so, um, and this in turn is part of the, the broader soil association, which has um, sort of works across multiple areas of food, farming, growing, regenerative forestry. So thinking about all the different things that, that come together um, and really thinking about how we can positively work in our local communities and, and at a more systemic level um, to sort of tackle some of the big, the big issues like access to food, um, especially in the times that we're living in now, and also thinking about sort of how we relate to the planet and the earth and our food systems and thinking about climate change and that kind of stuff. Um, and so one of our big campaigns every year is, is called Plant and Share, um, which is, is going to encourage people to, to bring together people in their local community just around planting and sharing. Um, and so we do, there's like loads of seed swaps happening, loads of people sort of growing in like sort of mother gardens, inspiring other gardens, um, loads of projects happening around the country. You can see all of this on our website and on our Facebook page. Um, so I'll put that in the in the chat um, after <laughs> after I finish talking. Um, but it'd be lovely to see you there. Um, you can sort of get a sense of, of everything that's happening around the country, and it's it's like really inspiring. I think, um, especially again, I think the news is full of of awful stuff, and it's nice to sort of see all this amazing work happening at at the, at the ground level. Um, and so Plant Share has already started. It started on 20th of April, but you can still register events if you're at Keen. So um, the website has all the details on that. There's loads of stuff to support you and help in, with that. And um, you can also sign up for our newsletter. So we have loads of sessions like this. So if you haven't been to one before, it'd be great to see you. Um, so anyway, so, um, so we're recording the session. If you could please stay on mute um, while, um, while we're, we're running the session, um, that would be great. Um, uh, but please do use the chat and um, yeah so I'll hand it over to Rachel Walsh um, and I'll talk a little bit about what they do and to introduce everyone. Hi guys, um, for those of you I haven't spoke to or met before, excuse me, I'm Rachel Walsh and um, this is Steve Galway. Um, unfortunately Roger Hewitt was supposed to join us today um, but Roger tested positive for COVID so he's not able to attend. Um, we represent Grumwood Wales um, and I run the project called, uh, called Roots to Life. Um, it's about three acre, I'd say, um, green space, which has been turned into a horticultural growing site. Um, Steve is one of my long-term volunteers. So Steve has been with me since the start. Steve, I'm new. Um, I've been running the project now, I think it's probably four years. So um, Steve has got a really vast background in horticulture. So I, I let Steve tell you a little bit about, you know, his background. Okay. Well, I trained as a gardener about 15 years ago. I've been working as a gardener and also in a plant nursery, and uh, I've had a couple of allotments as well. Um, I'm also trying to start a project with my wife with a community garden locally, and. As Rachel said, I've been volunteering with Grandwood Wales for about four years or so. So that's my sort of horticultural background. Yeah. And for our HX qualification, Steve? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got loads of qualifications. So he's, he's very, very knowledgeable. And it's, it's a shame Roger couldn't be here today because, like Steve, Roger's got a very long background in horticulture and run his own garden centre for 30 years. But unfortunately, he's a bit old. So maybe you'll um, get to see him on the next one. So the purpose of our workshop today, um, and we know, we're, we're very aware that a lot of people haven't got large gardens or any gardens at all, some people, but we still want to help people to maximise what they can grow in small spaces, especially food, because, you know, we all need good, healthy food produce um, for our health, the planet, and especially lately, cost of living is just gone crazy. So if we can help people to teach them to grow food in whatever space they got, that's what we're about today. So we're going to start off, the, the, the workshop is called Edible Hanging Baskets. So we're going to start off with a couple of hanging baskets. 
different types, but we've got some other things as well, which we can show you how to grow in small spaces. So I think we'll start off, Steve. You, shall we do a tomato? Tomato, tomato basket? Right. right. So, <laughs> so we just use, you, you can use any honey basket, but these plastic ones, you can pick these up for like £1.50, and obviously they, they have got um, a scrap handle. They have got little clip-on handles as well. Um, so they don't break the bank, and you can use them year upon year upon year. They've got quite a long life, life span on them, haven't they? So, um, but obviously, if you wanted to use, if you wanted to put more produce in one basket, you know, use a bigger basket. So if Steve will demonstrate now, the first one we're going to do is tumbling tom tomatoes. They are the small cherry type tomatoes and they will grow over. So, right, so first of all, we'll get some multi-purpose non-peak compost in the bottom of this. And I want it towards the camera. A reasonable amount in. About two thirds full. So that's about sort of the depth you want it. Then put some of these crystals in. This is called swell gel and it retains the water. Um, so we just put sprinkling of that in and mix it in by hand. The thing with canyon baskets is that most of you probably know the it um so that's the amount flowers, put in. They, they dry out very quick, so they do need to be watered most days unless it's trying to bring them inside. So using a little bit of swell gel, you can pick it up in any garden centre. Um, I think some supermarkets do it, like Asda's, Tesco. Um, you just put a little amount in, like Steve just showed you, and when you water it then, it helps to retain the moisture so they don't dry out as quick. Yeah, and at the tub this size, I'd recommend like two teaspoons full, basically, for a tub that size. And then, okay. and these are... What variety are these? Tumbling tongs. Tumbling tongs, right, okay. So if you get the pot like that, the fingers apart from that, because you're trying not to touch the stems at all. That should come out like that. And then you make a small hole in there. Put the tongue in. Put some earth around it so it's nice and firm. And it's got, it's just beginning to go over the side there. Um, that's what you want to so encourage it to fall down the side there. With tumbling tom tomatoes, you can pick up a pack of seeds. We've grown it, we've grown everything from seed. Um, they're probably less than a pound for like 50 seeds. Um, like I say, any supermarket, um, Wilkinson's, places like that, even online. Um, and you can get good crop tomatoes. Well, you probably wouldn't use the whole packet seed, would you? No, no, you know? no you and they've got a very good success rate. What we tend to do, because obviously the colder weather and our project hasn't got any heat in and the polygon has get really cold. So myself, Steve and Roger, we normally start them off at home. Um, a simple plastic saucer, you know, the, the ones that you, you, know, you can put under a plant pot, a little bit of kitchen roll, wet it, sprinkle the seed on top, wrap a plastic food bag over it, put it somewhere sunny and warm and within a week, germinated so you can pop them on so it's as simple as that can we so, use these for other things or can we use yeah you'd, um, you'd have a, you'd have four in here, yeah, yeah yeah so because these are quite small tomatoes like i said they're the tiny little cherry ones called tumbling tons we can put four in this basket because they don't go they don't grow that big they're not that invasive steve are they no no, no. run away with it yeah. <laughs> there we go. Tomatoes love a lot of sun, so you can grow them inside, but um, put them somewhere light. Um, they're great for small gardens, balconies, anything like that. And just make sure you give them a, a gentle water every day. Once they've established a little bit, I'd say about this size. Good thing with tumbling tongs, you don't have to pinch up the sides like that. So, once they've established to about this size, we would use a tomato fertilizer. We always use organic when we can. So this one is called, it's, it's maxi crop is the make. It's a whole range of maxi crop products. So obviously you, you check your dosage at the back, but I tend to put one cap full in a full watering can 
and then just water. So for the summer months, I would do once every two weeks in a basket that size, and then obviously that that will help feed and maximise your your fruit. So there you go, and then we just pop the where they buy. There we go. Specific little things for you, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other one. There's the other one. There you go. As easy as that. So you've got a lovely tomato basket, which will bear fruit all through the summer. Okay? Any questions? Um, we had a couple of questions for the chat that I might um, that I might jump in with. So one is, do you have to line the basket? Uh, not, not, not with these baskets because they're plastic baskets. No, you wouldn't have to. No, if if you were using something that was say made of wood or some other material that will absorb the wicker water, baskets yeah, normally, wicker. yeah, you'd have to line them. You know, you normally get like a rattan or wicker ones. Um, they'd rot pretty quickly, getting wet constantly. So I would put a liner on them. But you don't have to buy an expensive liner. See if you a plastic bag. Put in the bottom, pierce some holes in it. That's fine. Yeah, or even yeah, even reuse one of these bags. bags. We try to be used and recycle as much as we possibly can. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, yeah, using the compact. You've got, you know, like windowsill boxes or garden little troughs. You know, obviously, if you're buying compost, recycle the bags and use as liners. We've used a lot of these this year, Steve, haven't we? Well, I've shown you. Um, there you go. We'll get on with these in a bit. These are radish, which we've grown in these little mushroom trays, but that's actually lined with one of these compost bags. And the same as the mushroom trays, if you were to go to any fruit and veg store or market store, the chances are they would give you them free because they have their fruit and veg fresh in daily with them. Um, and they don't send them back. Um, the reason, <coughs> excuse me, I get quite a few of this. My, my daughter and son in law run a hotel, and obviously they have fresh produce delivered daily, and that's why they're called mushroom baskets, because all the mushrooms come in them, and they never take them back. So we're very lucky we've got an ongoing supply of them. But I know fruit and veg retailers, market stores, which sell fruit and veg, they would have the same. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right, we've got a few more. <laughs> I think maybe we'll just okay. do questions as they come, if that makes sense. Um, so what, what is the precise size of those baskets? Um, let's have a... Uh, I'm not quite sure, but... Um, it's a good job I've got deep pockets. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Tape measure. <laughs> right, so across, they are... This is 26 centimetres across. And when I rustle that out, and the depth is... 17 centimetres, so 26 across, 17 deep. That's brilliant. And then the last, uh, another question is how how mature are the plants you're planting there? Like how long has that been? How long have they been growing from seed? Those plants I think were planted in late February. So like I said, when, when we germinate them, they come up, we then pot them on, but obviously we don't make the baskets of them because they still need to be kept in heat, you know, up until, well, even now you wouldn't pull that out because there's a risk of frost. So after the last frost, mm. most, most, you know, um, edible fruit and flowers go out. But I'd say they are probably about six weeks old, six okay. to seven weeks. And how long do you think before you, how long before you get tomatoes then? Um, oh. So, June, yeah. July. Yeah, yeah. Probably, late June. Yeah, it, it's June. obviously depending on the weather, but yeah, yeah, I'd say, yeah, it should be from late June onwards. Yeah. And they've got quite a long season as well, these, so yeah. they will keep producing. They, they keep producing till the end of September, October, Steve, yeah. won't they? Yeah. Um, but with tomatoes, what, what we found, um, you can start them off, like if you buy a pack of tomato seeds and read the back, most mm. day, March to April, we start them off in January inside. And then you get an earlier crop, so you can do it in succession. You could do some in January, some in February, some in March. So they last longer throughout the season then. And you can do that with a lot of seeds, Steve, yeah. can't you? Yeah. As long as you start them off inside and you've got the heat, they germinate. Great. 
Great. And then one last question is how often do you need to water the metal plants? Made uh, every, every day. Plants? Yeah, every day. Every day. It's, it's yeah. little and often is yeah. the thing. So every day, yeah. yeah. Don't like constantly soak them. So it's like night because they don't like it too wet. But, you know, in the warm weather, I would say once in the morning, once in the evening, see, yeah. check them, you know, midday if, if, if they're in blazing sun. But twice a day, like Steve said, little and often. Just to keep the, the soil damp. Brilliant. Okay, I think we're ready to go to the next one. <laughs> okay. Um, shall we do a strawberry one? Yeah, okay. So the next um, basket we're going to show you how to do it is strawberries. Um, you can plant strawberries in any basket because like the tumbling tomatoes, they'll all trail over. But we have found these baskets, I don't know if I come closer because it's probably lighter. They've got um, the holes in the side. Um, these again are not very expensive. I think I bought these in Wilkinson's for about three pounds each. But if you time it right and go sort of mid-September, Wilkinson's always got a massive sale. And I've had these before for like 50 pence each. Obviously there's a chain that comes with it, you know, for you link on. But with the tomatoes, because these tomatoes are trailers, we'll show you now. Strawberries. A bit, yeah. That's uh, not tomatoes, sorry, strawberries, yeah. The tomatoes on my brain. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've done the tomato. We've done the tomato, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah that's... With these baskets, you've got they, they look like little windows on the side. And what you do, you just clip it out, they all clip out, which enables you to get the plant in easier without damaging the roots of the plant. So, yeah, there you go. So you just push the plant gently through that little window until you've got the, can everyone see it? Can you hold it up a bit, I think? Yeah, it's hard to see. Um, there you go. Until you've got the tomato, uh, sorry, the strawberry, I've got tomatoes on the ground. Maybe um, turn it to the side, maybe turn it to the side. Yeah, 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 yeah now you can see it better. And then once that's in, this little window, you clip back over it and it holds. There you go. It holds the root in place then so the plant doesn't actually fall out. Um, this one has six little windows, but because strawberries spread so much, personally, I would only use three of them because obviously you don't want to overcrowd the basket either, because otherwise, you know, it won't produce as much fruit because it'll be competing for room. Do you want to, next time you clip it, do you want to maybe bring it up closer to the camera so maybe we could yeah. see it better? Yeah, it's just like a bit dark. All right. Yes, yeah, is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, right. Excitement of doing things oh, like... Sorry, can you see that? Uh, maybe hold it up a bit more, I guess. Oh, yes. oh, I don't know if this is going to be possible, really. Plant where? Oh, it's just really dark still. Yeah, uh, it is dark, isn't it? Yeah. So oh, yeah, that, yeah, I think we can see it. And then, I don't know if you can see it. If you pop it just be here yeah. a minute, Steve. Um, actually, I can put it on there, can't I? But it's, it's yeah, quite, I can see that. Yeah. And then you just push the window back down and there's like little clips on it. And you hear it click. So, yeah, you can see the windows are still um, yeah. More or less, we can see, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll put one more in, because like I said, we'll do three um, coming out to the holes in the side. And then maybe one in the top. Because they've been watered quite well, they're quite crumbly, Steve, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'm like... There you go. So we'll top that up with compost now. So we cover all the roots that you can see. Tiny little bit of swell gel. Oh. 
Can I just check? Sorry, you're you're put, putting your uh, watering swell gel in without soaking it first, just sprinkling it in on the top. Yes. yes, yeah, it, yeah. It, it so you mix it in with the soil and then it all swells up to so the roots Wait, will yeah. run through it and then they will absorb the water direct from the swell gel yeah. in the compost. So, so have you put any plant food or anything like that or in, in like dry uh, stuff? Not to begin with, not no. To begin with, no. If they were doing, personally, if I was doing hanging baskets with flowers, um, I put a layer of compost in the bottom, water that before putting some of the flowers in first in the same you know way that we do the strawberries in the side but with the fruits we water them after because it just soaks right through them and helps the swell gel to expand and to be honest we could water them here now but because we're in the boardroom I don't <laughs> want to make too much mess <laughs> thank you so that's a strawberry basket any questions so just to put, just to check, you used you just put strawberries around the holes in the side, nothing yeah. on top to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We put one in the middle. One in the top. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, you can get bigger baskets. You can get smaller baskets. It's totally up to the individual how many you put in. But because strawberries spread quite quick, um, we have the best results with three around the side and one in the top, and then they all trade into one another. Because you know what it's like with anything like even flowers. If you put too much, they can peat in for water, they can peat in for food, they can peat in for you know root growth. So sometimes that is more. Okay. Right. So any more questions? Uh, oh yeah, we had a question um, from class three. Uh, so do the strawberry plants flower before strawberries appear? Yes, you have a little white flower on them. And these should start flowering any day now. So, yeah, you know, we've got Sometimes I've seen strawberry plants in garden centres and they're actually in fruit and they, when you buy them, they've got small fruits on them. So the flower obviously will turn into the, the strawberry itself. And so for those, the last question is like, how long before you actually get strawberries? Um, Probably like the tomatoes, I'd say end of June, early July. Yeah, it, 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 it depends on the variety. Yeah. You, it, usually, if you want a long period with strawberries, you get sort of two or three different varieties. So you can go from sort of like mid June right to well mid to almost end of July, really. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, a final question that says, um, "Strawberry plants tend to mature over the years. Um, so what do you do after the growing season with these in the basket?" I, I, I mean, my, my preference would be to take them out of the hanging baskets and if at all possible, either put them into, if you can put them into ground, great. If not a trough or something, because what they do is they set, they send out runners. So what will happen is that you'll get a stem and then a new plant and that will set its own roots. And so what you do is for the following year, you use the new plants for your next strawberry season. And the old plants you can keep, they will produce strawberries, but the, the main strawberry crop will be in the new growth. The new yeah, yeah. Put them in a big bucket or something. Yeah, and, any, anything, as long as they can sort of send out their stems and set other plants down, that's fine, yeah. Okay, so, 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 so if you're growing in baskets then, like what you really want to do is, yeah, after the season to put them somewhere else <laughs> so they can send out the runners. It's all possible, because if, if the idea is you're saving space, it means you can be growing stuff all through the summer, in the ground, say, and then at the end of the season, you can then just put strawberry plants in because they're very hardy. Okay. So they, they can just survive. So you, you can use, you know, for whatever, say, I don't know, root crops or whatever. When you sort of, you know, oh, well, okay. or salad crops, but yeah, at the end of the season, put oh, strawberry I didn't know that. I'm thinking about my strawberries out in the back in their container and I'm like, no. <laughs> that <laughs> is not. Fine. Anyway, I'll let, you go. I'll let you move on to the next. Uh, yeah. So the next thing we're going to show you is we've actually planted them in some pots. But this is a great way. Um, you can do these in hanging baskets. We haven't got, well, we do a seed one, Steve, is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, this is lettuce and we call it cut and come again. So this provides, um, oh gosh, for weeks and weeks and weeks. So we'll show you what to do now. Right. So again, I will 
fill this about two thirds full. You can use a variety of salad leaves, lettuce, rockets, spinach, anything, you know, um, leafy in this. And basically we call them cut and come again because once they start producing, the more you cut, the more comes back. So these are amazing for even in the kitchen, Steve, aren't they, you know, on yeah, the windowsill, window you know, um, or, you know, once the frost is over, they can go outside anyway. But um, these are really healthy, you know, crop of salad leaves that can be used right through summer. Again, about two teaspoons full of the swell gel. Get that well mixed in. This variety I'm using is called Little Gem Cross. Right, so. Shake the packet. There we go. And these are very, very small seeds. So. Yeah, they're tiny, uh, almost like dust, some yeah. of them. There we go. Ah, look, these are contrasting colour. So I've got probably between half a teaspoon to tea. I don't think. Let's have a go. I don't know. I don't, I don't, don't know. Yeah, yeah, let's go down. So and we'll scatter that just on the surface. Shake it across like that. Um, again, I don't know if that can be seen, but uh, that's just what the seeds look like. The and then just literally a handful of compost and just sprinkle it over the top. Because we don't want them too deep because they won't come up otherwise. So that's that. And then and label. I, I was going to say, we haven't been doing it because we know what's what, but um, if, if you're doing baskets or anything else, always make sure, you know, you put a label in them because um, if you're like me over the years, I'm like, what's this? I forgot so many things because I think in my mind I remember it. But um, when you get to do so many, it's like, no, I forgot. So you, you've basically got to wait then and see what um, comes up of you. Yeah, and so, a, another thing with the cut and come lettuce is, although we're doing it as a, a whole thing, if you're really sort of strapped for space, you could have like two or three of the cut and come again lettuce and then have other things in with it. So like some radish or maybe some herbs, anything else that would yeah. go with it. Yeah, that's it. You don't have to use um, a separate pot for every um, herb or vegetable. We'll do a basket next, guys, and we'll do a mixture. Okay. Yeah. Of, um, different things. Yeah, let's get some of this out. Oh. All right. Okay. Obviously, when we get outside, we'll give these a really good portrait. We had a quick question about, do salad leaves do um, as well in full sun? Um, so would they be the same as tomatoes or? Uh, you're best off not full sun all the time. They appreciate sun, but- Maybe partial shade? Yeah, I, at least for part of the day, you want it in shade. You know, if you've got a site whereby it gets sort of morning sun, but not so much of the afternoon, that would be really ideal. Um, but yeah, it full sun all day. It no, it's, it's not good for them, especially especially in a basket because they really do dry right. out quickly. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Um, obviously these we've been growing up our polytunnels, and you can imagine the heat in there is phenomenal. And um, when we went in yesterday morning, all the salad leaves they just had flopped because it was too hot for them. But once we took them outside, give them a good watering, they come back as new then. So yeah, too, too, too much heat, Stephen, too yeah. much sun, it'll just make them um, flop over a little bit. So, what we're going to do with this one, Steve, should we do some spring onions? Okay. So, again, like I showed you earlier, with the mushroom baskets, we've lined them with a compost bag. 
um, sprinkled some spring onion seeds on the top, like Steve just said with the salad, cover them with a bit of soy and hey presto. There's our spring onions. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what else have we got? We've got. Um, Look at the back of the choy leaf. Are they more spring onions? No, these are leek. Leek. No, 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 <laughs> not leek. Uh, mint, coriander, uh, parsley. Right, so yeah, so we'll mix this with herbs. So we've got coriander there, some spring onions, which I need a trowel for. There we go. Healthy bunch of these. Can put sweet pepper in them. So what I'll do with these, the spring onions, is separate them out. So we're going to grow. So we've got four there. And I'll like go for about half them, a dozen. If, if you grow them in clumps together, when you take them up to the soil, if you're going to pop them on into a pot or basket, just gently fries them apart. That's half a dozen spring onions there. And then what I will do is with a trusty finger, like a small <laughs> hole, drop the roots in and then firm the soil around it. And I will try and do one of those at an angle so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, you know what? Maybe if you stood at the side of the table, like if yeah. Yeah, I think that might happen. Oh, it's a little bit, maybe not brilliant, but still. Maybe. Do you want me to move these out of your way? Maybe you can the your seat. All right, then. I guess it's more about where the sunlight is. Yeah, I can't be. It's, it's bizarre, I must be the car, because if you're in this room, it's really light, Steve, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's lovely, yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Let's do those. I don't think we're in that. No. Down a bit, Steve, maybe. Yeah, that's it. But no, still yeah, can't. we'll try it. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so we can't, we just can't, like, it's just too no, dark. No. Certainly from what I can see, it's just a dark circle. Yeah, it is a yeah. dark circle. Yeah, right. Um, I think we all have a sense, hopefully, of what this might look like, because we've all done it. We can yeah. bring it right down yeah. once it's finished now. So, just together. You guys, you're, not, you're not putting anything to drain in there. No, they've got drainage holes at yeah, the bottom. If, be, yeah. holes. if you do use something like a bucket or um, any pots, um, obviously make sure that you they have the holes in the bottom if they haven't just I just get a, a hammer and a nail and just tap a few holes in right then to spring onions I'm adding some coriander in the middle because that will go up nice and tall which is why I've put the spring onions around the side because they won't cut out much of the sunlight for anything that's in the middle Yeah, so you've grown the spring onions from seed, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the smell is delicious here, yeah. isn't it? Um, what else? Um, do you want we in there? have got. Oh, did you want radish? Or did you want... Do you want some radish? Yeah. That'd be good. And here we have radish again grown from seed in one of the mushroom trays. And as you radish can see, grows are, so quick as well, don't they, Steve? I mean, these are already quite well developed radishes. You've got the main plant, uh, main bulb. But, 
two or three in here, depending on how they look. So is that, so that's three radishes, one coriander and... And half a dozen spring onions. You could add, and you could add some more spring onions in there and you could add a bit more radish. I'm putting three in because it's got quite a lot of leaf on at the moment. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is with radishes, usually with most varieties, the leaves are edible. So what I'd suggest is before they get too big, take some of the leaves off because you can eat them, but also it means there's more light getting through to the other plants. Right, okay. Same, so it's always useful. So even if you don't eat them, just remove some of the bigger leaves anyway. So you, you're not getting it covered. Um, yeah, there's a question. Once harvested, can you re-sow into the basket again? So what was that? So once, once you've harvested things, can you re-sow back into the basket? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. yeah. I'm, I'm quite a lot of it will be successional. So with the radishes, yeah, you, you probably get very least two, usually three crops at least during the summer. Yeah, depending on where you yeah, are. Yeah, so once you've pulled your radishes, yeah. just put some more seed in. Because uh, I mean, that's why it looks a bit dark, only having three or four radishes. But if you're doing that each time, you're taking them out and you can yeah. plant them up. Yeah, and these are very young plants, you know, the spring onions, obviously they will you know, grow. So that's why you don't want to, you know, crowd the basket because then, like Steve said, you know, apart from the, the fact that they're fighting for root germ, they're not getting whatever's in there and getting, you know, enough light. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, the hardest thing when I was plant when I started was the succession planting. So just making sure you don't, because I just planted everything to start with the first yeah. time. I ended up with a billion kinds of vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> There's 300 lettuces, yeah. It's difficult to say because if you're anything like us, we just want to plant, plant, plant. And then, you know, one of our volunteers, um, Tony, she comes up on a Monday and she was showing me a photo of her lettuce. She must have like 400 lettuce <laughs> because she went over crazy and just so packets upon packets. And she's like, I don't know what to do with them. I said, no, I want to speak and give them away. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy Plant to do. Share, eh? Plant and share. <laughs> Any more questions, guys? Any questions? Yep, I was going to say, feel free to come off or to come online as well and ask ask away unless or yeah. use the chat yeah. either way. Yeah. Oh, Steve, do you want to explain a little bit about the natural plant food? Right, okay. Um, this is my own personal thing. <laughs> um, right, so. Up. Right, for plant food, I mean, you've been showing the sort of tomato yeah. fertiliser and what have you. What I tend to use are two different things. One, the noble stinging nettle and also comfrey. Uh, the stinging nettle, uh, you make a tea out of. And what you do is you collect the stinging nettles carefully, especially at this time of year before they flower, so they've got all their main nutrients in, and they produce a lot of nitrogen and iron for the plants. So nettles, you just get a container, and I use the ones that you get bird balls in. Um, it needs to have a lid. So what you do is you pack the nettles in as tightly as possible, put a weight on, you know, a stone, brick, anything you like, put it down, then fill the container up with water, put the lid on, and you leave it between about two to three weeks. Now, the only thing with this is you need access to somewhere outside because it smells awful. <laughs> Do not try making it in your house. It's it just, just don't, you know. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you've got people you want to leave home, do not <laughs> make it in the house. Yeah, <laughs> But after about two to three weeks, it's ready. And then what you do is you just put it in whatever containers you like. Um, I tend to use jam jars because it's easier. Um, and they've got a nice screw thread on the top. And then when you're watering, you put, uh, if you've got a 10 litre thing, you put um, 
one, you put one liter in. So it's ba basically it's a ratio of 10 to one of whatever you're doing. The other, there's a very quick way of doing it, which is you just get your fresh nettles, put them in a heat proof container, pour boiling water on them. So you're literally making a tea, um, let it cool and then use that. Now I've never tried that method. I don't know whether the boiling water affects the nutrients in the nettles or not, but certainly doing it the cold water method, it's very good. And what it's best for are salad crops, any, anything leafy. Don't use it on tomatoes. Tomatoes don't like it. But yeah, any of your things, you know, like your salad leaves, uh, a lot of the herbs, love it. Um, Could you put it on stuff like um, cabbage and stuff, Steve? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like yeah. That, would it be good for? Yeah, if, if, yeah, if you're doing any, yeah, any, any like sort of brassicas, yeah, your broccolis, yeah. yeah, anything like that. But anything along the lines of tomatoes, aubergines, pumpkins, squashes, they don't like it because of high iron content. They like the nitrogen, they don't like the iron. So, so is, so is this a regular stinging nettle then? That's just an everyday, normal... Oh yeah, if, yes. if, if I touch that, it would hurt, yes. <laughs> I thought that it's in a pot there, you know what I mean? That's just very confusing. <laughs> Ah, that's because I, I dug it up last night and it's the safest way of doing it. Um, yes, it looks very nice. No, no, like I said, and at the moment it's the best time to do it before it flowers. Or, okay. if, or if you get somewhere where, I don't know, some you know, like local authority cut down a load and they started to grow back, that's when to get it. Because, like I say, once they go into flower, they use the nutrients up. Okay, uh, wait, there's one more question, one more, one more quick question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, long, how long can you keep it before making another batch? Like, how long does it last? Oh, it'll it'll last months and months. I mean, you, I mean, you could. I mean, I certainly used it the following season, so six to eight months. Yeah, easily. I don't know how long you could, but I usually make it small batches, so it doesn't last. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know, but certainly, yeah, you can use it the following season for sure. Brilliant. Um, the the comfrey, which is this stuff, which ends up with very very big leaves. Yeah, you know, probably about that wide by that, that long eventually. Um, that is very good for the tomatoes and the pumpkins, etc., because it's very high in both potassium and phosphorus, which is good for fruit production. So I would use that and it's exactly the same thing is you put it in a bucket with a lid with water and something on top to weigh it down and you wait two or three weeks and this smells even worse than the nettle. <laughs> Um, but it is great stuff, and again, the same ratio, 10 of water to one of the comfrey tea. Um, again, I know that definitely keeps until the following season. The thing is, if you're thinking of growing comfrey, um, there's a particular type, I'm sure you can look up online, it's called Russian comfrey. Grow that because it, it doesn't spread. Some of it's really invasive all, seeds. All other comfries, you plant them in your garden and you'll just have a garden for the comfrey. So uh, grow the Russian stuff, some phytum up blandicum, and the, the seeds that aren't viable, so it won't it won't spread around. You can know, the only way you can spread it is by digging it up and cutting the roots up and putting exactly. them in pots. Yeah, and that works a treat. Um, but yeah, that's my thing on plant feed because especially with the nettles, it's free, and once you've got the Comfrey up and running, that's free. You know, packet comfrey seeds, well, I think it's two ninety five. I think, for about 300 So, yeah, lifetime supply. Um, so can you just say again how long you have to leave it before you use it? Is it? Oh, the comfrey, yeah, again, about two to three weeks. It depends how warm weeks. it is. Yeah, if, if you've got it, say, in a, you know, say a, a shed somewhere that doesn't get any sunlight so it doesn't warm up, it'll probably be three weeks. But if you've got it out in the garden and it's getting sun on it and everything, yeah, a fortnight at most. Um, I don't think you can do the hot water method with the comfrey. I don't think that works. I think it kills off the nutrients. And, but yeah, so like I say, it's a nice, cheap, and easy way of doing it. Between those two, is, is there any plants that, like, so do those kind of cover all of your vegetables? Yeah. Is there anything else you would want to throw into there? Um, I don't know. Um, can't think of anything that's not not anything that's quite as good as this. Oh, another 
thing with these is also once you've used up your nettles and your comfrey is you can then put the actual soggy mass of plant on top of like say you could use it as a mulch yeah. to hold the water in so whatever container you're using um so it's useful for that as well and again if you don't want to make the tea you can just you know use nettles or comfrey on the appropriate plants just put the leaves around the base it helps it's, it's got it's going to be nowhere near as good as using the tea but yeah. it all helps Oh, yeah. but, uh, no, to, to answer your question about are there other things, I really don't know. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've got the honest one. Those are the two I use. Borage. Yeah, borage might, I don't know. But um, I'm usually anything with a deep tap root will have a lot of nutrients in the leaves. So they're probably usable to an extent. But yeah, on what, I don't know. That's something we'd have to look into. Cool. Right. So we can do it. Right. Uh, um, how are we looking for time, Andrea? Oh, it's like we've got eight minutes. Right, okay. So <laughs> I'll do... <clears throat> I know, gosh, we've been talking for ages. I'll do one more basket, and then we'll just show you some other stuff rather than take up all the rest of the time making stuff. So another basket is... This is just plain garden mint. Obviously, with garden mint, I'm sure most of you know, it spreads like crazy. So I'd never plant her in your garden, either in, you know, a, um, a trough, a basket or some kind of planter because um yeah it does like to spread but um they're, they're great um obviously not just to eat you know to pick and eat but they're great um for de deterrent um against a lot of garden pests because it gives such a strong smell off that are a lot of the pests won't come here yet. so i've just put three small plants in there um, with garden mint, gosh, you can basically pull a little bit off, pop it in a bit of soil, and it'll be root steep on it because it's very invasive. So that's another one. Um, right, so we'll just, because we, we are short on time now, we'll just go through a few things. Other baskets, do you want to hold oh, them, Steve? Oh, um, you can do that. Well, Steve actually picked these up this morning from Asda. Um, for people that maybe don't want to grow seeds or haven't got a big success rate or haven't got anywhere to, any, anywhere to grow them, um, what have we got here, Steve? We've got flat leaf parsley. We've got thyme, thyme in there and coriander, coriander in there. And these were 65p each and I think one of them is 70p. Yeah. But so they come in, you know, they, they, they bring benefit and veg, Steve, I think, yeah. they, in, in Asker's Tesco's all um, supermarkets. And basically, they've been grown and they've just taken them out of the pot and popped them in these little paper packages. But if you didn't want to grow seeds, you could pick up some of these, just get a pot of compost, pop it back in, and you've, you've already got it growing. And, it, you know, it's, it's quite um, cheap as well to buy. So that's an idea. Um, what else have we got here? We have, right... For the smaller garden, or if you just wanted a small area to grow your fruit and veg, um, carrots. These are the smaller variety, Chantenay, I don't know if every, any one of you have heard them. Um, basically, let's show you these buckets. Now, these buckets, again, you can get them free of charge. If you notice, most of your Asda's Tesco and supermarkets the fresh cut flowers, they've got them all in these. Now, when they bring fresh flowers, very, very rare do they take these back. So if you were to go into your local supermarket or, you know, um, a market in general where they sell flowers, the chances are they give you some of these free. Then you just pop a few bowls in the bottom and they great them for growing, you know, small crops. So we've got a carrot in here in this one. Do you want to quickly demonstrate some potatoes? Right, okay. Let's get some magic compost. So we've got some potatoes for here that are chipped. They just started growing again. And I believe these are main crop. Uh, these are first early. First early, are they? So with potatoes, you get first early, second early, and main crop. So you normally would plant them in succession. We normally put 
first early's in around March, second early's around now, yeah. and then main crop around June, July time. Right. Um, but you, you can pick these up really cheap as well from places like Wilkinson. I think they're like two pounds for a big net full. Right. The, seems to have been problems with the light. If I can show you, I've, I've filled this up only to about that level there, and then we put the potato on top. Um, so if we get some of those, there we go. Those facing up. Yeah. Obviously, the growth facing up. Uh, then what happens is we put some more soil on top to the level of these. Okay. After you've covered your potatoes, how many would you put in there, Steve? But three? You could put three, yeah, two to three. Two to three. Um, once they've covered the soil, obviously, make sure that they're always kept damp. And then you'll see some greenery coming through. Every time your greenery comes through, keep covering it with compost. And then once you've got to the top, you will end up with a lovely big pot of potatoes. And like I said, you can do it in such small spaces, indoors, so easy to do. Right. So very I've, fresh new potatoes. So I've now covered the bits that were growing but it's still only full up to about there so as Rachel was saying as you see greenery come up let it come up an inch or so then just cover it with soil and probably a few days a week later it'll come through again keep doing it until the bucket's almost full and then once it starts coming up through there just let the plant grow the next thing is you can um, use oh sorry go on yeah. Oh no, I, well we had a question about peas, if you can grow peas. Uh, yes. In yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. We didn't bring any peas down no. actually, but yeah, we, we, you can grow peas in buckets and... And, and also in hanging baskets yeah. because the, the way they fall, because obviously you have to train them up when they're in the ground, but if they're in, on the edge of a hanging basket, they can yeah. just tumble down the side yeah. and they'll grow properly fine. The same in a hanging basket with... Um, Small varieties of cucumbers as well. Um, you can get like really small ones and cucumelons, they're tiny. So if you want to put them in a hanging basket, the same as Steve said, you know, you have to train them to go up. If you put them in a basket, they will train over. And I think a lot of benefits from growing in baskets, no slugs, if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. um, not so much garden pests on the ground. And I think you get more air elevation because they, yeah. you know, they, they're not so low down. And um, another thing is the baskets, chilies, so many different varieties. These are actually sweet peppers. So peppers and chilies, I'd probably put in a basket of the size we've been doing, um, no more than two if they're a small variety. If they're quite a large variety, maybe one, because some of them do go really bushy. Um, you, you could also mix and match with the tomatoes, with the peppers. Yeah. So you could have, instead of having four yeah. tomatoes, have two tomatoes two, yeah. and two peppers. Two peppers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this one then is running bean, uh, runner beans. This is a small variety called Hestia. So they're dwarf beans. So you can plant them in a small pot in one of these buckets. Anything really, you can get your hands on. Um, you don't have to have a huge space to put loads of bean sticks and like these as they start growing just put a couple of little sticks in there and just gently tie them to the sticks to train them to go up so that's what we've done earlier yes. <laughs> yeah so I think we've covered most things guys so I don't know if you've got any questions so there's two, two more questions at least. Um, so one is, how do you know um, when to harvest potatoes? Could, could you say that again? Yeah, harvest potatoes. Yeah, when, yeah. when do you know that they're ready? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, basically the greenery starts not being green anymore. It starts dying off. Yeah, what, goes yellow and Yeah, sweet, what, and what you'll do is you'll probably get flowers on them. Um, you can pick the flowers off, but I mean, I, I, I quite like them, so I, I leave them. Um, but yeah, they, they just start going very yellowy and stuff, and then they're, they're ready to harvest then. Brilliant. 
And then there was another question about slugs, which are like my own personal nemesis. Um, so does mint keep slugs away? Is there anything else that you can use to keep slugs away? Um, we had one suggestion of crushed eggshell, which I've not tried, which I will try. Yeah. I have tried a new um, item on the market this year, because obviously we would use that pellet anyway, but they are banned now, so they're actually illegal to use. And I was looking on, I believe it was Amazon, and I it's called Slug Be Gone. And it's totally natural. They're little pellets um, of like wool. Right. And obviously you put them on your plants and when you water, they expand. And so far, so good. But the last couple of years, I've been doing the beer traps and they really work. I just get a little, you know, um, plastic tub. I did read that metal is better because it gives off some kind of signal to the slugs and they don't like it. But if you get some cheapy beer and pour it in, the amount of slugs I caught that way is phenomenal. So, but they are, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, de definitely the beer traps are probably the best, but like I say, if you've got if you've got a pub nearby and they can let you have some of the olives, you know, the stuff that they just tip down the slots, yeah. that, that's absolutely ideal. Yeah. Um, oh, even if you just bought one can of beer, I'm sure you could water it down a bit because yeah. it's the, the smell they go for. You know, so that's brilliant. Like, um, and there was another question about where you're based. <laughs> I was just going to actually say about that. We're based near Blackwood in Tefili. Um, uh, this is called Pont Lumpfrite, this area. We're about a mile and a half, Steve, maybe two miles what, from Blackwood. Oh, like Blackwood, yeah, back to yeah. Um, Our headquarters is like a big office building and our site is based literally a mile up the road. So my email address is richel.wash, and it's spelled R-A-C-H-A-E-L, at groundwork.org.uk. And my telephone number is 07946-176425. So if anyone has any question or they'd like to come to visit, please feel free to contact me at any time. What's the, I'm just going to put the email in. It's, it's groundwork.what? .org.uk. .org .uk. Okay, so Rachel was, yeah. Okay, so I've just put that in the chat. Oh, thank you so much, Andrea. Um, yeah, so I don't know if anyone else has any other questions before we end. I really hope you've all enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, I hope, yeah, definitely, um, yeah, I, what well, I did. <laughs> I don't know if I count, though, do I? I don't know. Um, um, oh, yeah, so, so one, the class, yeah, so there's people just down the road from you that are here that might definitely um, arrange a visit with you. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, so if there's no other, if there's no other questions, um, just to say that um, I've just popped a link in the chat for, um, it's just a really short evaluation thing to help us improve or um, just to let us know that we did well. And then if you've got ideas for future sessions, we'd also love to hear that. Um, I know some stuff, I think we're doing one on green social prescribing and like there's some other ones coming up. Um, and then again, if you look at the website, you can see the future sessions coming up as well. Um, so it'd be great to see you at other, other things. Um, but yeah, I think I'll end it there unless there's any other questions. Um, yeah, I think, thank you. Okay. Great. And then, so for the for the people from class three, I'll just I'll just um hopefully you've got the email, you've got Rachel's email, and you can um email her to arrange. They were they're wondering if there was enough space for a class to visit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Again, I'll just put everything down there. It's been quite a bit too good lately because obviously it's picking back up now because of COVID. It was very hit or miss, but um. We've got quite a few wanting to come back and so yes, everyone does welcome, all ages, everyone, school, you know, whoever. And it's a lovely site, you know. We obviously it's about, you know, the food growing mostly for us, but it's also about mental health and you know, people want to, you know, people's well being is really important to us as well. So it's a very laid back site, Steve, isn't there, where Everyone gets on with everyone, and there's always something to do for everyone as well. So, yeah, you can just come up and have a seat in the chat. Amazing.
I want to come myself. Um, <laughs> so, so I think I'll end it there. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, okay, thank you. And, uh, thank and I'll be recording around. So, yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.